Hello, my friend. You know, there is a commercial on TV right now that I absolutely love. I don't know if they have anything like Emmys for TV commercials, but I'm sure they have some type of award, and and this deserves it. It's for Zillow, and that's the real estate company. And a woman comes into the room, and she's talking to a whole bunch of other women what appears at first to be other women, but it's all an image of herself. There are 25 clear images that you can see of her. She calls them the me's. And then in the distance, fading out of sight, you see hundreds more around this corporate board table. And she first wants their opinion. She talks to negative me first. Isn't that what we always do first when we're talking about a decision, when we're talking about a dream? We talk to that aspect of ourselves. Then she talks to spontaneous me, then paranoid me, then antisocial me, and then lazy me. Then there is another me that comes into focus, overstressed me that just can't take any of this. And then, and this is something we always talk to, worst case scenario me. And then at last she talks to helpful me and she says, that's my favorite me. And they all end with an affirmative chant, me, 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 me. When you're praying for something, when you're trying to make a decision, you have free will. Usually people think in Christianity that means looking in the mirror at the one image of you and convincing you that it is what needs to be. What you're praying for will come to pass, but you have to convince not one aspect of yourself, but sometimes dozens sometimes hundreds. And that sometimes takes time. The inner mind is like an onion. It peels off thin layer by thin layer. People say, I don't know what my blocks are. Well, it could be some of the me's inside of you. And you need to work on this and start affirming talking to every individual me. Now, some of you have heard my story that goes back now 23 years when I was first starting this ministry. I had a speaking engagement. It was eight and a half hours away, and I drove. Instead of turning on the radio, I decided to start praying an affirmative prayer that I would become the minister of one of the most successful ministries in America. Now, I had just paid for some expert consultants to give me their opinion on whether this was possible or not. Everyone said, no, this is not possible. They said, do you have a million dollars? And I said, no. And they said, well, it's going to take that or more to, to get this out into the public so that the public knows. Well, they had convinced When you're paying the expert from afar, they had convinced hundreds of the me's inside of me that this is impossible. So I started to pray, and I prayed for eight and a half hours solid. Not easy to do. You get sidetracked in mind. You get diverted in your attention. And I used every trick in the book. I had my image in the rear view mirror and I was talking directly eyeball to eyeball to me, which is not really safe when you're going 70 miles an hour. I sang my affirmation. I shouted it in a good way. I was talking to all the aspects inside of Chris to convince Chris that this was possible. Now, when I got to my speaking engagement, was I any better? Maybe a little bit, but I was still 
in that area of doubt, in that area of disbelief. After the speaking engagement and I was driving home, I started to pray again. And I remember clearly, as if it was yesterday, it was about six hours into the drive, and I passed over a spiritual place. It was a miracle place. One mile, I was doubting Chris, doubting me, and then the next mile, I had it. It was as if an angel came down and landed in my car and said, we're going to grant you this. And I knew that I knew that I knew. And immediately, things started to change. Miracle happenings started to happen in this ministry to make it go worldwide. When you are trying to convince yourself, pray for as long as it takes to convince you. You may think you're convinced, but if you don't have it, you're not. You need to work and work and work until you convince yourself. Is it easy? Not always, because the most stubborn person in the world are some of the me's inside of you. You need to let go and let God when you face the negative me's inside of you. If negative thoughts are allowed to linger, they grow. They infect other me's inside of you. They become so embedded in you that they close in and close out the good thoughts. How much better it is to go into an experience where you are convincing yourself of where you want to go, not convincing yourself of something that's impossible for you to travel. You let God. And your mind is a fit setting for thoughts of wonder, thoughts of appreciation for all the beauty in your world and for all the good that God is bringing forth into your life. You let go and you let God in every one of your thoughts. Your peaceful mind then becomes a meeting ground with God. And how precious are those moments of sweet communion. By letting go and letting God, you can keep this ground holy inside of you. In Genesis, it says, Fear not, for I am with you, and I will bless you. This is absolute truth. You don't have anything to fear because God is with you. You have great blessings ahead, but you need to work with God. You need to get to that meeting place and get to that meeting place as a positive person. Totally convinced inside of you of what is possible with God. God bless you.